Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Senior Evangelist here at Dremio, and this video is going to be to guide you on how to run Dremio on your laptop, so that way you can try out the unified Lakehouse platform for self-service analytics and AI. Bottom line, be able to kind of get hands-on, query your own data, and have some fun with it, because it's actually a, quite a powerful and transformational tool. Um, and the best way to know that is uh, to try it out. So bottom line, to get started on your laptop, so that way you can try it locally, and you know basically at your own pace what you're going to need is you're going to need docker okay so head over to docker.com if you don't already have docker installed on your computer and install it so essentially you'll just go to docker.com you'll click over here on get started okay and then just find here the download link for your particular system whether it's mac windows or linux and then just install it like any installer for any software now once docker is installed then just open up docker and you'll end up having a ui that looks kind of like this um, at this point, you don't really need to touch Docker anymore. Okay, there's basically two ways you can go from here. So I'll show you both. One way is you can just run this command. Okay, and that's going to do everything you need. Okay, so for those who are comfortable using a computer terminal, okay, I can just open up your terminal on Mac. Um, you know, you could open up uh, your, your PowerShell on Windows. Um, in this case, I'm on Linux, so you can open up just any terminal emulator you have, and you can literally just copy and paste this command. And since you have Docker running, that will basically do everything you need, okay? But if you're not comfortable, you know, opening up a terminal and getting it started this way, here's how you can do it with Docker software, okay? So if I go back to that Docker UI, what I want to do is I want to get the Dremio image, okay? That's going to have everything it needs to run the Dremio software. So what you do is up here, you just do a quick search for Dremio. So right there, I find Dremio. And then you're going to want to pull the latest image. So if you pull this button, it's going to download that Dremio image. And then I can go to all the images that I have on my computer. I have the Dremio image right here. And I can say, hey, I want to run that image. So I'll just click over here and say, I want to run that image. I'll click down here. And essentially, all you have to do is see how these numbers here for like the different ports, just put the same number over here. So 31010, 32010. These are just different ports that the Dremio software is going to use. The only one that's immediately important is this 9047 one. That's going to be where the Dremio UI is going to live. You can give the container a name. We'll call it Dremio. Okay. And there we go. We, we can leave it at that. So once you have all that entered in, you can click run. And this is going to begin running the Dremio container. So you can start seeing here, it's going to be all this output that's going to look like gibberish right now. But don't worry about it. You don't need to do anything with that. Just give it one or two minutes for it to start up as it starts up the software, and then you'll be off to the races. Okay, after a couple minutes have passed, you're probably, you might see this message right here. So it says it started on localhost 9047. That means it started. Again, if you just wait a couple minutes, it'll be good to go. So then just go back to your web browser, open up a new tab, and you just type in localhost. Localhost just means your computer, and you have Dremio running on port 9047. And ta-da, we're running Dremio. Okay, so we have Dremio running, okay? And then all we have to do is create our initial user account. So we'll do that. So I just create my user account. Dremio.com. Okay. And now you are in. Okay. So you now have Dremio running on your computer. You can begin working with it. The easiest way to get started. You could, you know, if you have like data in the cloud, like you have an S3 account or an Azure account and you want to connect to your data that you already have in your existing uh, object storage or wherever, or you have in a database that you use, uh, you can connect to any of those here. But if you just have some CSV, some Excel files, some JSON files or Parquet files you'd like to work with, you can just click right over here and click add and upload a file. Okay, so then you go here and I will go browse for a file. So I can say, hey, you know, documents, I think I have a folder called data here. And let's say here I have this CSV here called Factbook. Okay. So I say, hey, I want to upload it. Then I can go here to settings just to make sure that, hey, I'm interpreting it right. So I can see that, hey, look, the delimiter is not commas, but they're semicolons. So I might want to change that delimiter. Okay. To something custom to that. So see, now it's picking up on the right columns. Okay. Cool. And okay. Oh, that's the line delimiter. My bad. Wrong one. So that's fine. Okay. But what I want 
is a new line custom here for a new cell colon there we go and then i want to make sure that it takes that first row as the column names and there we go so now i can see that it's reading my my csv file correctly okay and then i can just hit save and now that data sets there for me to run queries on so now i can go in here and do select star from that data set hit run okay and there we go and i can start running just any kind of query that I, i'd like to run okay so i can um, you know, right now, since it's a CSV file, all these data sets are strings. So I may want to make sure that, hey, this field right here is treated as like a number. Okay. Um, and so forth. So what I can do here is I can go like here and like convert the type of field. So I can go see here, convert data types. I can convert those fields that are currently text because I can see the ABC right there into number fields. That's generally going to be a thing you have to do with CSV files for like JSON files, Parquet files. It'll be able to pick up on the schema. And, uh, but yeah, you can begin running queries. So for example, if I just want to have like, um, as an example, I just want, I just want this Albania record. I can just say, Hey, select star from there, where country equals Albania. Okay. And I can just run that query. Okay. And there it is. Okay, and again, I can run multiple queries at the same time. So I can go over here, and maybe I want to try, you know, let's say here, let's try Algeria and Canada. Okay, and then it's going to go run those queries one by one. Okay, and then I can click here on the tabs to see the results from the different queries. Okay, so I could do that. Also, if I want to work, if I'm working on different things with different data sets, I can create multiple tabs to write different SQL there. Also, I can find all my data sets right over here to the side so that way I can easily insert them into the SQL editor. So right here, I have my Factbook CSV file. I can just hit this plus button and it puts the name right there, making it saving me a lot of time typing. So there's a lot of really cool quality of life features here. But the best thing to do is just get hands-on, work with some data sets that you're used to, that you have locally and try running some queries and get hands-on with it. But uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you get started with using Dremio on your laptop. See y'all later.